And the Lord was really speaking about something to me. And what the Lord told me was this. We are the envy of heaven. I know some people that just, oh, envy, that's a bad, oh, well, envy does not have to be used as a demonic term if I'm talking about heaven. Just like God being a jealous God. Is God, is God demonic? So is something wrong with him being a jealous God? He said he was. You going to tell him something wrong with it? Okay, then calm. Look at somebody say, calm down. Amen. So it's the same way, the envy of, you know, like they would say she's the envy of the ball. Uh, he's the envy of the neighborhood. It's not used in a, in a negative connotation as much as it is an admiration or I wish I had that or I wish I could be like that in a good way, all right? Okay, so I set that straight for all of you folks that pick stuff apart. But this is what the Lord spoke to me. We are the envy of heaven. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash envy of heaven dot P D F. Amen. We're the envy of heaven. You know why we're the envy of heaven? Because we get to see what everyone worked for us to see. Men died, gave their lives. I told y'all some men only had one sheet, one piece, one manuscript of the Bible. And had to survive beheading, had to survive just all kinds of onslaughts to get that piece of paper to the translators so we could have the Bible. These men prophesied, saw it in prophecy, saw it on islands in exile, couldn't go nowhere, but saw the end, but couldn't experience it. We get to see it. We get to see the end. We are truly chosen. I've never been this excited in my life, ever. Like, I'm excited about what we're getting ready to see. Now, <laughs> you don't have a relationship with the Lord, then you're scared. <laughs> and I understand. If you, your relationship is with Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, then, yeah, you're going to have problems. My relationship with, is with the Lord that is orchestrating this. Why would I be afraid if he has the blueprint? Why would I be afraid if he has the blimp view? Why would I be afraid if one day he spoke and said, G. Craig Lewis, you will be a part of the generation that sees my return. Why would I be afraid? I'm privileged. If Jonah could come back and testify, if Daniel could testify, if Paul, if any of them could testify, they would say, you are the chosen generation. We get to see it. It's so funny how when you talk end times, folks look at that as doom and gloom. So I'm like, well, then what are you living for? If the end times and Jesus coming back and the culminate and the, I mean, the finale is coming. And that puts you, makes you gloomy and scared. What are you living? Look at somebody and say, what are you living for? What is it about for you? What is this about for you? I'm encouraged. We sing all them songs. We sing all the songs. By and by when the morning comes. We sing all them songs. I'm, in, I'm encouraged. To, what is it? Determined? I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus. How far? All the way. All the way? Really? All the way. All, are you going all the way? Then what you scared of? If you're going to go all the way. I mean, some folks just need to backslide now and get it over with. 
if you're not going if, if you're not planning to go all the way Second Chronicles 7 and 12, this is, everybody knows, 7 and 14. We're going to start at 7 and 12. And I know modern day Bible scholars, or they're not even scholars, they're just folk, like to pick this apart and say this is not applicable to our time because we don't have the same situation that Solomon had as he built the temple and God had threatened to curse the land and everything, and Solomon prayed to God not to curse the land. I'm going to build you a temple where you can dwell. And so they wanted to dwell in the temple. I mean, God said, okay, I'll come dwell in the temple with you. If my people which are called by my name, if y'all, basically, if y'all act right, then I'll dwell with you, and I'm going to bless the land, you know, your land. And people like to, you know, say, well, we're not Israel no more, so we don't have a dedicated land. We can't pray corporately as a dedicated body and all those kind of things. But I believe that all of this translates right to us as the church. The only difference is the temple that Jesus was living, I mean, that God was living in there is now our bodies. Okay? So if our bodies are the temple, bodies are the temple, then this is very applicable. Let's start at 7 and 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. So this is after Solomon has started building it. God said, I've chosen this place. Then he says, if I shut up heaven, that there will be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. So basically, these were the threats that if the people weren't acting right, this is what he was going to do. He's going to shut up heaven, that there be no rain or no sustenance for you know, food and vegetation to grow so they can eat uh, and the animals to drink. Then he says, I'll command locusts to devour the land. I don't know if y'all know it, but right now we're under the greatest locust attack, the, the, the biggest locust, locust attack that we've ever seen. They say it's billions of locusts. They're, they're eating up Africa right now and they're eating up everything. Can I continue reading? Okay. See, because somebody's not taking this serious and I want you to take it serious. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you stuff you can Google. Okay. Quit Googling what's happening with Kanye West and uh, Kim Kardashian and you get somewhere and pray. Amen. God will have you eating these locusts like John the Baptist. <laughs> Shoot, scared of no locusts. Look at somebody and say, God always makes a way. Hey, he's going to make a way. What is, what is, look at somebody and say, what are you scared of? He's going to make a way. Hey, Tim, you will eat a locust if that's all that's left. If that's all that's left. <laughs> so if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence, sickness, disease among my people. God is saying he, if he allows it to happen. So how do we counteract it? This is what he said. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will what? Heal their land. Now, how can this not be applicable if we are his people called by his name? We are the Israel of God. We've all been grafted in. He tells you, this is the formula. Humble yourselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open. Now I can look at you again because you've gotten forgiveness for your sins and you aren't in an ugly, sinful state. Remember, God couldn't even look at his own son when he bore our sins on the cross. God is too holy. So my eyes will be open. My ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, which was that temple, now your body, that my name may be there, how long? Forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually or continually. This is God's contingency. This is, this is the way it's going to work. If we 
humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, not our own will, not what we want, his face, and turn from our wicked ways. Amen? This is God's call. This is what he's saying to his people in this hour. This is the only way you're going to make it is if you're right with him. The only way you're going to make it is if you're right with him. If you're not, the locust going to get you. The curse of the land is going to get you. Because there is indeed a curse on this land. And I'm going to show you why. The sin of our world has come up before the Lord. Time's up. Time's up. America, world, everybody. Time's up. The arrogance flying in his face, doing what we want to do. Time's up. Everything had a time. Even the, the scripture I read before when he made the, when he talked to Solomon and said, if you do this, then everything will be good. But if you do this, then everything will be bad. And what, guess what happened? Solomon went after false gods. He said, I'm going to take that temple and I'm going to make that temple ruins. And it became ruins. And the people ended up just messing up and ended up going into Babylon, going into captivity, all those things. They just kept doing that over and over because God would just say, time's up. I love you, but I got to put you through some things to straighten you up. Can I keep preaching in here? Amen. But look at somebody and say, what are you worried about? I mean, if you serve the God that's doing it or allowing it, then you're on the right side. Amen. Somebody came to the wrong service this morning. They should have went to the service where they, oh, no, they're not having service. That's right. I had a friend of mine, he texted me from Detroit. He was like, man, I can't believe how easy it is for these folks to cancel their services. It's almost like they didn't want to do it. But the sin of our world has come up before the Lord. The scriptures tell us in 1 Peter 4 and 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. That means if you're doing the right things and folks attack you and, and, and you're suffering because or for the sake of Christ, don't be ashamed. Glorify God. For the time has come that judgment must begin where? at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, Lord have mercy. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? They're in trouble. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in what? Well doing. Look at somebody and say, keep doing well. You got to do well. You got to do good. We have to live this thing out. We have to be saved by grace and live holy. Can't just be saved by grace and keep sinning. You have to be saved by grace and live holy. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. How do we expect to receive from God being disobedient to God? Does that even make sense? So let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls in him with them. So judgment has come for the boldness and arrogance of these sins. These are the three sins that I, pre I, I taught this message back when Obama was running for office these three things because I said these are the three things that Obama stands for and people were saying that he was a man of God and God's choice and he stood for the very three things that we're about to get judged for in America and beyond same-sex marriage judgment straight-up judgment the Bible said God made them male and female and did what? Did what? Blessed them. So same-sex marriage is undoing God's blessing. 
It's undoing it. It's flying in the face of God and saying, no, God, we're going to do it this way. We would rather do it this way because we feel like doing it this way. And we dare you stop us. This is what they say when they're marching. Marching naked in the streets. Where's the church? Where's the church? Nowhere to be found because they're 501c3. That's why they can't go to church today. Even though they have the constitutional right to gather, you know it's against the Constitution to stop people from gathering. That's why we in here. I'm going to hold up a sheet of paper. You remember what y'all said? Hey, look, somebody. I tell them, I tell you, I've been ready for this, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's, let's do it. What? What? Let's do it. I ain't talking about the law. I'm just talking about the end times. Let's roll. Well, wait, what have you? Look at somebody say, what you been living for? I mean, really? Has it always been about you and what you want? Really? Really? It hasn't been about the kingdom. It hasn't been about seeing Jesus. You're not excited about seeing Jesus? Well, I got to go and I got to. When Jesus was calling him, he said, you got to go do what? Let the dead bury the dead. You got to go do what? Don't you realize what I'm saying? Don't you realize who he was? Man, folks is in that internet world. That's how you know when folks is in the cyber world. There ain't nothing you can preach to them going to get that fear out of them. Somebody thinking about toilet tissue right now. <laughs> what you gonna do with all that tissue? That tissue, tissue, <laughs> she started laughing. Pastor crazy. What are you gonna do with all that tissue? And why did you just get tissue? You didn't get no meat, no vegetables. You didn't get any frozen foods. Tissue, what are you gonna do? The second sin, abortion. Ah, Proud. Our bodies, we kill babies when we feel like it. God has nothing to say because these are our bodies. That's what they say. Now, I know we got folks in here that has repented of this sin. Some of y'all went through it or whatever. I don't know what that feels like. Even some of you men talk women into doing it or had them do it or whatever. I don't know what that feels like. I haven't experienced any of that before but I can only imagine. That's gotta be tough, but God forgives. Amen? You in here, you done heard the word, you've forgotten forgiveness for it, but you ain't marching. You ain't marching, proud of it. Want a law passed to protect you So you can do as many of them as you would like. That's a whole different story. Amen? Amen? And then the third sin that our nation is coming under judgment, this is the one that's got some folk in here real bad. Idolatry. Mammon. Money. You let money lead you. You let money lead you some of y'all got divorced over money, lack of it. Some of y'all done fought your mama and your daddy over it. Some of y'all done broke law and stole over some money. Money is your God. Some of you in here now discontent with the message I'm preaching because you think I'm stopping some of your money. Because I'm telling you to be home and raise your child if you got a small child. Yeah, I mean, that's just what you can do when you can do it now. Don't, don't y'all go, oh Lord. When you can do it. Takes time in many cases. Amen. You a single mother, you got to work, you better work. I'm staying home with my daughter. Well, you better come up with some money some kind of way. 
man, that's just common sense. I don't have to say that. You got a bunch of student loans, you can't be home. Better go help your husband out. He wasn't around when that happened. I don't understand. Like, why can't you use reason? I'm going to stay home, be a stay home mom. $400,000 in debt. Yeah, he can handle it. He work at the car wash. You better, you better grab a bucket and some soap and get right in there with him, Jack. You better help. You got them loans. I don't understand why that's like common sense. But I'm a hero, bro. You better have a supergirl. You better get a sidekick. You better get a sidekick. Them bills, Jack. Man, that wasn't your fault. That's idolatry and mammon, though. We just money. Everything, all the decisions we make are based on money instead of God. That's idolatry. Based on what you see on Instagram. What you see someone else have. You serve mammon. God's coming to judge that. Can I keep going? Yeah. God told him when he, when he made man. And all, all three of these go against what God told him when he made him. He said, first he said, male and female, I created them and blessed them. Right? Same-sex marriage goes against that. Then, then he said, be fruitful and multiply. Abortion goes against that. Amen? Then he instructed them to subdue the earth. Not for the earth to subdue them. That's idolatry. Same-sex marriage, and I just have scriptures, y'all, I, you know. Romans 1 and 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. God's like, okay, I'm going to let y'all do this. I'll be back. When it gets so bad, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you God's limit always. He said it would be better for you to tie a mill millstone around your neck and cast it over the sea when you do what? When you go to messing with the kids, it's time for the Lord to come back. Because the kids are in it, they, 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 no, that's it, time's up. So now Dwayne Wade and all, I'm dressing the little boy and confusing these kids and turning these kids so that you can get on TV. Now all of a sudden you own everything. Yeah, time's up. That's when God, he said, no, 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 no. When you offend these little ones, when you mess with these children, that's when time's up. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is what? Against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. Why do people say it's not in the Bible? And God, homosexuality is not in the Bible. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. And receiving in, into themselves or receiving unto themselves that recompense or that payment for their error, which was me. God's like, I don't have to do anything. Your bodies are going to do it. Yeah. AIDS. Not even AIDS anymore. Ain't no cancer that works faster than AIDS now. That's the big one. You haven't even heard that mentioned, and that's the one. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, just totally went away from what God said and spoke, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Gave up on them so they could suffer the consequence. Here comes judgment, y'all, for this sin. Our nation throwing this sin in God's face and the church not taking a stand. Abortion. Amen. Psalms 106 and 37. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. This is what it is. It's the sin, it's the birth, or the, it's the result of a sinful act. 
In most cases, some married folks get abortions. That part makes me really scratch my head. Unless, you know, it happened outside of their marriage and they may, maybe that's the way they think. I don't know. But folks just getting abortions, killing unborn babies, y'all are satanic. It is a child sacrifice whether you make it one or not. You just sacrificed a child. Stop the life for what you want to do. That's what a sacrifice is. The Bible said this is what they were doing back in that day. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Back, this, these were the children of Israel. They shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, who they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with what? Blood. America is polluted with blood by the thousands. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, inasmuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. This is how sick he got of his own people. He didn't want them anymore. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen punishment. And they that hated them did what? Ruled over them. And finally, idolatry mammon the worship of money Matthew 6 and 19 says lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where the moss and the rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up yourselves treasures where you got to be heavenly minded the reason you're afraid now is because you're earthly minded. Now, here is the thing. Ten years ago, you didn't think you'd be where you are now. And you're here. Some of y'all struggled so hard back in the day, I know you tried to forget it. And it's hard for you to remember how hard you struggled, but God brought you this far. Why would, a God, why would a God that loves you bring you this far and then let you go? Listen. God is not changing. The world is changing. So the same God of your salvation that saved you is the same God of your deliverance that will deliver you. He told every one of them, when they asked him in the, uh, on the mount, uh, um, when they asked him in Matthew 24, and they said, what will be the sign of your coming? What's going to happen? And he started telling them, it's going to be war and rumors of war. It's going to be uh, uh, the earthquakes and divers plays. All these things are going to happen. He said, when you hear of these things, when these things start happening, don't go back in your house. Don't get nothing. He said, but flee here. Flee there. Go here. Go there. He was giving them a map, instructions, telling them how to avoid some of it. Jesus was. That's how much he loved us. He was telling them, look, you're not going to have to deal with all of this stuff. I'm going to show you how to deal, how to go through it without it going through you, without it ruining you. I don't understand. Folks scared to, oh, no, no more tissue. Folks sitting at home streaming church. Was it that easy? Was it that easy for them to say, don't have church? <laughs> I've been waiting all my life for them to tell me not to have church. <laughs> I mean, I, that's why I don't understand. Now, how are we going to be, listen, how are we going to be a light of this world under a bushel? Ain't that the scriptures? Pastor, how are we going to be the light of the world and nobody can see our light? For where your treasure is, what? That's why some folk in here can't give him a praise when I say good stuff. Because I know I'm saying some good stuff. It's good to me. I, I know I've said some good stuff. But you can't put your crusty, dusty, germified hands together 
Because your treasure's not here. You are where your treasure is. And you're going to be where your treasure is. Didn't the scripture just say that? Where your treasure is what? That's what that way your is. That's why while I'm preaching, you're thinking about the chest show. <laughs> Did I get enough? I think 50 rolls is enough. I mean, are they going to be mummifying people? What are they going to do with all this chest show? And when they make some more, the, the stock that you got in yours is going to go down. They're going to make some more tissue, Elder. You got, I got the last of the tissue. They're going to make some. They're making it right now. It's a truck coming right now. <laughs> what is that? That's the tissue truck. <laughs> the tissue truck. <laughs> and hand sanitizer. Oh, one dude bought 17,000 bottles of hand sanitizer. It's going to put it on Amazon and, and eBay and sell it. Amazon and eBay closes his account so he can't sell it. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. What you gonna do with all that hand sanitizer? And who even said hand sanitizer safe? I mean, when did hand sanitizer become the, the, the end all? I need water, I need, I need it off me. I don't need it blended in my skin. I need it off. If it's a virus, if it's a corona bug, I need him going down the sink. That's why I'm glad I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Bible said ain't nothing poison that's gonna mess with me if I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Y'all talking about Corona, a giant cobra snake? Black mamba can bite me. Now we ain't finna have no snake handling testimony service. <laughs> like them deep wood apostolics be doing with the music. I ain't dancing with no boa constrictor, no python. I don't have to prove it to you. I believe it, but I ain't, I, ain't going, I ain't taking a test. That's if I'm just riding my bike or something, want to jump out the bushes or something. Okay, then. But I ain't going to pick one up and bring them in here and show you anything. I ain't proved nothing to you. I don't know you like that. Look at somebody and say, stop being scared. Man, that's what they want. Fear mongering. Well, if they can make you scared, you'll make the worst decisions you've ever made in your life out of fear. That's what fear does. You don't think it does? Do you see them folks fighting at Walmart? That's what fear does, fighting over tissue. That's my package. That's my package. I'm going to squeeze the charm. What in the world? Tissue? Really? I'm trying to rest you. Oh, I got the corona. Oh, Lord. We're just going to let you go. Let me out of here right now. Me and this tissue. Let me out. But the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, then the whole body shall be what? Full of light. What is this saying? This is saying that what you're seeing, if that's all you're seeing and all you're working for, toward, that's, you, that's what you're going to be full of. Because the light of your body, you want it so bad. You can't even get along with your husband, your wife. You can't get along with people because of the things you want. He said, if that I be evil, thou whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or the God of money. You can't follow God trying to get the things you're trying to get.
And God is judging that. God will take all our little paper money away. Are you kidding me? It's all paper. For most of it, it's not even paper. It's virtual. You got some zeros on a screen. Numbers on a screen. That's your money. Do you know how volatile that is? How? I mean, a, a computer glitch. And all your zeros are gone. And that's where your faith is? My savings, my IRA, my debt. Do you know they can forget you in a computer? And not find anything? It's a computer. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and what? Love the other, or else he will hold to the one, despise the other. So God is coming to make the difference. He's not going to let you walk around and boast in your sin. You won't be proud. You won't be arrogant. Our sins are going to humble us. Because we have to be holy if we plan to go back with him. Amen. Summary! This is, look at somebody say, this is the best part. We are the envy of heaven. This is the greatest time in human history. The, I mean, the history of the planet. This is the greatest time to be alive. We are about to see the books of Daniel and Revelation come to life right in front of our eyes. And you were created. Point at somebody and say you. You were created for such a time as this. You didn't even know you were that important. You didn't know you were that important. 11 of the disciples are looking at you saying, man, I wish. We saw Jesus. We were with Jesus. This is what they say. This is the end of him. We were with him. Then we saw him with the nail prints in his hand. After he was crucified, he came back. But y'all get to see him in all of his glory with the heavenly host following him, armed and ready to do battle. You get to see him like we didn't get to see him. Man! Look at somebody say, it's about to go down. <laughs> Heavenly beings and those that have passed to the other side of glory would gladly, gladly trade places with us. We are truly the chosen generation. We are chosen to see the coming of the Lord with power, the most magnificent and majestic event in human history. This is the culmination of the entire Bible and the words of the prophets. What they all talked about, we are walking through. We are the generation that gets to see the finale. All has led up to this moment. All of our prayers, all of the martyrs, the deaths, all of the pain, all of the persecutions, all of the spiritual warfare, it was all for this. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at somebody and say, do not be afraid. Rejoice. Do not be afraid. Rejoice. For our redemption does what? It's close. It's close. Are you really in love with this world? Have you made this world your home? Do you really want to be here that bad? Rejoice. For our redemption draws nigh. Stay close to God. There's still work to do. Forsake your way for his. Turn from sin and do what? Turn from sin and do what? Live holy. Live holy. 
so we can lead others. We don't want to go by ourselves. We want to take some folk with us. Amen? But if they don't want to go, my seat's reserved. The greatest time in human history. You're about to see it. 1 Thessalonians 4 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a what? A shout. It's not going to be no secret taken away. No, he's telling you what it's going to be like. There's always a shout and a trumpet and a voice. And they always extremely loud. You think Jesus is going to sneak in here? Really? Left behind? Really? You know, I was studying the Revelation. I'm studying the vials. I'm studying the, 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 the trumps. I'm studying all that. Oh, I'm just oh, I'm putting it together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And all I spoke to me was like, uh, uh, all of that is not that important. You need to get people ready. These people have offenses against their own fathers. So if the spirit of Elijah is coming to bring the sons back to the fathers and the fathers back to the son, then somebody needs to go in there and get some repentance so that folks will get along with their very fathers or they're going to miss everything. You ain't sitting up here with unforgiveness in your heart expecting to be forgiven for your sins. He said you can't do that. If you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will the heavenly father forgive you of yours. You're going to miss it all, no matter how it goes down, if you have offenses. Yeah, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, not a church with knowledge of the, 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 the trumpets. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall what? Rise first. Then we, look at somebody say we. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Where? In the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So if you're worried, if you're scared, the next scripture is for you. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Everyone stand to your feet. I'm built for the end time. That's why I'm here. This is it. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just pray right now against the spirit of fear. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. We believe we're in the last hour, so we can't be fearful. Father, I pray right now that you would help us to refocus on that which is important. Not money, not toilet tissue, and hand sanitizer, and getting in line in the store first, and running in the cars, and flipping over buggies, and just acting wild because of what social media and the news is programming us with. But Father, help us to relax and trust in you. You did not bring us this far to leave us. You did not bring us this far for us to leave you. So Father, as we repent, as we humble ourselves, I pray right now, God, that you would remove all fear. The opposite of fear is power, love, and a sound mind. God, our minds can't even be sound if we're afraid. So I pray right now against mental illness and bad judgment. When people are fearful, they make bad decisions. In times of crisis, when things are at their worst, people make terrible choices. I pray against those choices. I pray against those decisions. I pray against mental illness. I pray against mental problems. I pray against disillusion. I pray against delusion. I pray against strong delusion. I pray, Father God, against these things. I speak against it. Sound mind, I speak, and sound judgment, I speak. 
into the lives of those that will receive it. Keep us sound in our judgment. Keep us sound in wisdom. Help us to make decisions against the flow, against the grain, against society, against the internet, against social media, against TV. God, we'll go against everything for you and line up with your truth. I pray it and believe it over every house, every man, every strong man, every woman that is holding it down in her house, just whatever the situation is, I pray for power, love, and a sound mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.